Act Two. Everything that lives is designed to end. We are perpetually trapped in a never-ending spiral of life and death. Is this a curse or some kind of punishment? I often think about the God who blessed us with this cryptic puzzle, and wonder if we'll ever have the chance to kill him. Hey, the name's Zinnia, but everyone just calls me Genius. Just kidding. It's just Zinnia, like the flower. I've heard they take a long time to bloom. My job is... how do I put this? I'm the chief technical development for the human forces, I suppose. I'm developing a new type of android known as a Yorha, upon the sixth orbital base, the lab. The lab is equipped with not only the most state-of-the-art development equipment, but excellent staff as well. Zinnia, are you talking to yourself or something? Oh, number nine. Well, I figured once you Yorha type androids are perfected, the whole world's eyes will be on me, so I thought I'd practice my speech. <laughs> Seriously? Don't you think that's jumping the gun a little? A first class researcher such as myself must be prepared for anything and everything. Oh, so that's it, is it? Oh, number two. What is it, number nine? Do you need something? Uh, no, not really, but... Then you're just wasting my time. Wasting your time? <laughs> Don't fight now, you two. Number two. Communication is of the utmost importance for androids, so I'd hardly call it a waste of time. All right. Okay then. Today we are going to test everyone's motor functions, so I'd like for you to tell everyone to meet at the testing block. Number nine, you especially. You especially need to remember to head there, seeing as you're always getting distracted by everything. Right? Oh, so you do realize it. You've only said that a million times. <laughs> It'd be hard not to. Right then. Testing block in ten minutes. Got it? Okay. okay. Real quick, people in the chat are saying number two is actually supposed to be A2, not oh. a 2B. Oh! And, yeah, because I was reading that, I was like, that doesn't really? quite seem like 2B's that character. That makes a so, lot more yeah. sense. So should we go back and reread that with A2 or... Starting at 2? Yeah, because I, I was looking at that yeah. and I was like, uh... <laughs> starting, yeah, we'll start, start act two, 2 over. Yeah. Give me a second, no, let me I was, I was find our cue. I didn't two. know! Starting yes. starting at, at 2? When, two enters. when number 2 enters? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know. No, Jay is saying, okay. Kyle, it's not A2. It's I'm not? so confused. It's... they never... Jay says it's not A2. Alright, well, let's just... I mean... Let's keep going. Okay. It's fine. Where were we? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we don't need to go back. It's so, okay. do we want... So I th Jay, Jay says number two and number nine are the personality prototypes, Copy. not duty. Uh, so, okay. it's not it's not A2. Copy it's, it's, it's technically not 9S and 2B either, but they're similar prototypes. Just kidding. So it is... It should be your voice. Kira. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll read okay, it then. kids. <laughs> I'll get to read in a little bit. Don't <laughs> worry. It's gonna be all right. Okay. They're the base models for the new units, but to me, they're like my cute little family. No, maybe more like my students. It's painful for me to send them off to the battlefield, but all I can really do is train them so that, they, that they'll be strong enough to withstand whatever they face there. Mm-mm. At least, that's what I thought. Hey, Zinnia, there's something I wanted to ask you. Oh, number nine, number two. Is it just me, or are you two always together? Just a coincidence. I'm only here to deliver the documents you asked for. Right, right, thanks for that. And, uh, what is it you wanted to ask, number nine? Uh, nothing in particular, actually. I just saw number two passing by and decided to follow her. Creep. <laughs> Aw, come on, don't be like that. Jeez, if you two are just gonna flirt, do it somewhere else. I'm too single for this. No, wait, wait. I really did have something to ask you about, though. Your name's based off of that flower, right? The Zinnia? Why do you have a name like that? Wasn't my choice. My former senior officer called me it. Huh. So, names can be given out that easily? 
Well, nicknames aren't really a problem, but for an official name, you'll need permission from the human force's higher commander. If you don't get that, then I'll, it'll be a hassle for administration to deal with. Um, could we... Hmm? Could we be given names, too? Sure. Once you've finished all your tests with your assignments has been decided, I think Command will give you your official names. I see. Oh, hey, number two. It's almost time for us to get our memory storage checked. We should head over to the server management room. Understood. Zinnia, thank you. Those two can never be given official names. Within Yorha Unit's bodies lies a powerful energy source made from the core of a machine life form. Using the enemy's technology in their bodies like that disqualifies them from being treated as legitimate androids. It's already been decided in my meeting with the command that they'd continue to be named by their model number. What am I? What am I doing? Two weeks ago, a vast portion of the eastern Eurasian continent fell into the hands of machine life forms. Not only were we unable to deploy dragoons to the Kingdom of Noon, but androids have begun to retreat from the front lines as well. But I'm fully aware of the cause. It's all because androids have lost their will to fight. We have an urgent need to introduce the new Yorha units, but they're still riddled with problems. Although they're exceptionally powerful, they require multiple high-quality cores for machine life forms, and thus, their operating costs are far too high. If I'd have... If I'd have given estimation, it's unlike we'd be able to deploy more than a hundred or so units. At this rate, turning the tide of battle will be... to be in our favor will be exceptionally difficult. Xenia, may I come in? Ah, uh, number two. What is it? I just have a question. Ask away. When we receive Earth's relative coordinates while on the satellite, how should we measure How should we measure our position if we can't see the ground due to cloud cover? Hmm. That sort of thing seldom happens, but if that happens, you should calculate your position using the current time and stars within your observable range. For example, the constellation Orion, perhaps. Orion? That's right. Humanity once looked up at the night sky and would often compare the arrangements of the stars to their gods. We don't have any particular gods we believe in, but the coordinates of those stars still remain, so if we look closely at them... Oh, I see. So that's it. Zinnia? What is it? No, no, it's nothing. Rather, I should be saying thank you. What a strange person. That's right. Androids have lost the will to fight because they've lost the thing that they believed in. Humanity. And in that case, we'll just have to create that. I spent a week devising the draft for said plan. But here's the summary of it. We have to release an announcement to all the androids around the globe that humanity is still alive. Of course, naturally, here will be someone, some who will demand proof. And in order to convince them, We'll create a server on the moon from which we'll broadcast communications for humanity. Right now we have an un Right now we have an unmanned base and there where we store information about humanity, so we can go ahead and just use that. For the time being, we'll refer to the server as Council of Humanity. Next, in order to get communications I mentioned going, we'll have to prepare full-time Android special forces as well as a 13th orbital satellite base. But until all androids know about Council, Council of Humanity, this plan will... Uh, no, there's no way it'll work. The plan poses a great risk, and we'll never be able to keep all the secret forever. I should just dispose of... Huh? Zinnia? Is there something wrong? You're looking kind of upset. Uh, uh, oh, um, uh... <laughs> was I? Well, it, it's nothing, number nine. It's really nothing. At the time, Number 2 was undergoing tests on breaking through the atmosphere outside the lab and was out in space on standby. 
As she'd just finished her preparations for being a descent test unit, she was merely waiting for the lab to instruct her to begin. However, her signal to begin the test never came as scheduled, nor was there any response from her attempts at communication with the lab. After around 15 minutes of waiting past the scheduled time, she decided there must be a problem with communications, and she decided to return to the lab. And there, she witnessed it. What was really happening in the lab. What's going on? There's smoke coming from the lab? There was smoke billowing out of the turrets on the lab. When she arrived in the hangar, the area's usual lighting was completely out, and all that existed was the red blinking of the emergency light. It was a fire. But a fire on a satellite base is completely different from one on the surface of the planet. Not only is there nowhere to run, but more importantly, the lab is packed full of various materials that are no less dangerous than gunpowder. Number nine! Zinnia! Don't worry, I'm coming! Without even giving it much thought, she made a beeline for Zinnia's room. Due to the gravity in the hallways malfunctioning, it was difficult for her to even walk. By kicking against the walls, she was able to eventually make her way to Zinnia's lab and open the door to it. <laughs> Zinnia! And what she saw there was a raging fire engulfing documents and various equipment as well as her fallen friends. Number four, number 21, what happened to you? Uh, Zinnia, what happened here? Everyone's... Number two, no. You have to get away from here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just what I'd expect from a combat model like you, number two. Looks like I couldn't land a fatal hit so easily. Number nine, what are you... Hey, number two, didn't you know? There's a little hidden secret about us Yorha units. Number nine, don't... You shut up! <laughs> number nine, stop! What are you saying? What did he ever do to you? What, him? Well, you see, you'll never believe how he's been creating us Yorha units. You know about the black box we have inside us, right? We were told that it was just an abnormally high energy efficient fusion reactor. But... But the truth is that they've been salvaging cores from the machine life forms and reusing them in our bodies. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? We may not be humans, but of all things, our structure is the same as those damn machines. Like this, we're not even androids. We're just monsters. But even if that's true, oh, going this but I've far... only just scratched the surface. You see, it's Zinnia here who set this whole thing up. It was all just a ruse, telling everyone humans are still alive on the moon just to give androids the will to fight. But that little plan of his was incomplete. There was a risk of information leaking out from that satellite base that was meant to manage the human server on the moon. That's why I decided to rewrite his plan. I rigged the 13th base to have a back door that'll open at a certain time. The base will be destroyed by an attack from machine life forms, at which point only the server on the moon will be left with transmission capabilities. And so... I'll create a god on the face of the moon for us androids. I've already sent a program to the server there to carry out this plan. It even contains the blueprints for all our Yorha designs. Through this, the automated production of Yorha units will give birth to our god. And then, us Yorha units will truly have a god worth dying for. Hey, number two, I think I'll call this plan Project Yorha. Please, number nine, you've gone mad. There's no stopping this plan now. We'll all be manufactured all over again. But 
I'm happy that this version of myself could be killed by you. I sunk to the ground after having killed number nine. I thought I could see number nine smiling through the flames, even if just a little. Hey, number two. I wonder, why do you think we were born? I don't know, number nine. I just don't. I believe only tragedy awaits us in our futures. And that we made a mistake somewhere along the way. We can never, ever be forgiven. Never. I did not!